room at the Sheridan Hotel where we start the National Football League Collegiate Player Draft. It's the most unpredictable draft I can imagine in, in forever. They now have 12 picks. They have six picks in the first three rounds. That's more than anybody else. And if they fall in love with somebody, they have the ammunition to maneuver as well as anybody. So Brett Veach has the ability to move around for specific players that he would like to go and get. The Kansas City Chiefs select Patrick Mahomes. Inside the Teddy Dodge, touchdown! Chris Jones. They hit Prescott. They'll sack Prescott. Go, go. Miko Hardman. Dives, touchdown. I can't believe it, man. Creed Humphrey. Crashes inside the five. Nick Bolton. Broken up by Bull. Trey Smith. Blowing open a hole. I just think that Brett Beach has done an amazing job to position themselves. And this is a very, very good year for him to try and be creative. The 2022 National Football League draft will be remembered for the middle part of the first round being trade crazy, and the Chiefs have jumped right into the middle of the mix. Hi, everyone. I'm Mitch Holtz, voice of the Chiefs, along with Chiefs reporter Matt McMullen. We are at the practice facility. We are just not just yards away uh, <laughs> from the draft room, and the Chiefs have just made a trade to move up in the first round. And let me just announce the trade here. The Chiefs have taken cornerback uh, Trent McDuffie, a, one of the most experienced and most competitive corners and players of this entire 2022 draft. The Chiefs have traded with the New England Patriots, given up the 29 to move up to 21. The Chiefs have also given up the 94 and the 121. The Chiefs still have the 30th pick. We'll get to that in a second, but let's talk about Trent McDuffie, a – Tough kid, competitive kid for the Washington Huskies, 100 tackles, uh, didn't give up many. I mean, you look at it in, one, in just 36 targets, only allowed 16 catches against top flight competition. Your thoughts on trading up and getting Trent McDuffie, a cornerback for Steve Spagnuolo. And zero touchdowns allowed last year. This is a home run of a pick for the Chiefs. And, you know, I joked around that the Chiefs could have taken 20 to 25 different guys at the back end of the first round. I truly didn't know who it would be. I didn't have this guy on the list because I didn't think it was realistic yeah. that he would be available this late in the first round. If you look at Dane Brugler at The Athletic, one of the very best uh, draft analysts out there, he had Trent McDuffie as the number two corner on his board ahead of Derek Stingley, who went number three overall. Uh, if you look at Pro Football Focus, he was the number 11 player overall, regardless of position on their board. This is one of the very best corners in this entire class. Many thought he would be a top 15 pick for sure. And to get him at number 21 overall is a coup for the Chiefs. Let's talk about why he's here and why the Chiefs made this trade. Uh, first of all, we'll get into McDuffie in a little bit, but a wide receiver run. There was a run now uh, of five picks out of six where wide receivers were taken. What that did was push McDuffie down the board. We had predicted this. Where's the run going to be? Is that going to be edge? Well, it was a little bit. Mostly wide receiver to push down guys that were thought to be and projected to be higher than a Trent McDuffie getting here at 21. But what do Chiefs like in their corners? What does Steve Spagnuolo like in their corners? Tough, feisty. They must be willing tacklers um, and uh, competitiveness. And that's what uh, Trent McDuffie brings here. 100 tackles out of the corner position. And we mentioned not much given up. Um, and those 36 targets, just 16 catches. The other thing is he can return kicks. So at the very start of this, you could see him being a slot corner um, were part of the nickel or dime package and potentially become a returner if McCall Hardman uh, becomes uh, more uh, dedicated to the wide receiver position. Very versatile player, yep. Trent McDuffie. Um, he can play outside in the slot. You can even put him at safety if you want to. He can just cover and really just play defense uh, in the secondary wherever you need him to play. Steve Spagnuolo is going to love this guy. Uh, PFF mentioned he can handle any coverage role. They also compared him to, to Jair Alexander on the Green Bay Packers. I think Chiefs fans will like uh, that comparison. Uh, Dane Brugler said that uh, he's as good athletic as he's he's as good athletically. I'm excited about this uh, as he is mental skills. His mental skills are even more impressive. So this guy is just fantastic across the board. He's going to come in here and compete for a day one starting spot. Uh, I think on this defense, I'm just thrilled with this pick. Once again, I can't believe we found this guy at pick number 21. The other part of Trent McDuffie is he's a good man defender. Uh, Steve Spagnuolo likes to play a lot of man defense, bringing the pressures, changing pressures. Uh, but you've got to play man defense. There isn't a whole lot of off coverage uh, in the Chiefs' defensive approach. 
And with Tavarius Ward leaving to go to San Francisco, uh, Mike Hughes going to Detroit, there has been some discussion of, hey, adding to the corner room uh, in volume and also in talent. They've done that here with Trent McDuffie. And they thought enough of him to be able to make this trade with the New England Patriots again. The other part of the trade, which is exciting for you and me and the rest of the Chiefs' kingdom, they kept the 30th pick. They kept the 50th pick. We're going to come back on live with the 30th pick, so don't go far away. We're not far away from that uh, where the Chiefs will do that. So they get an impact player, a day one player that can help you win in week one, and then also keep their second first-round pick. To you and me, when we were doing scenarios here, this to me is a dreamlike scenario to get this player and keep 30 and 50 in the other picks. Well, that's the thing with this draft is really the depth of this draft is in uh, picks 20 to picks 80. I mean, you want to have as many players in that area as you possibly can. We keep talking about the opportunity that this draft is for the Chiefs. It's a chance to get a whole bunch of young players, good depth players that can come in here and compete for starting roles, and we can have them for a very long time. You don't often find teams that are as good as the Chiefs are having this many high draft picks. So that was really the danger of trading super high in the first round. You don't want to give them all away for one player. Uh, to trade to 21 overall, you still move up and get a player that you thought was sliding and their value is higher than where he was being drafted. And to hold on to the majority of those picks is a major win. The other thing he does, Trent McDuffie, the Chiefs' first round pick, again, the Chiefs moving up with the New England Patriots to get the 21st pick to take McDuffie, is he also becomes an energy creator. He becomes a culture guy uh, in that DB room and throughout the defense. We also know there's been a lot of changes in that defensive secondary, right? And uh, when you add guys like Reed from Houston, who's another culture guy, you go look at a Juan Thornhill who's you know expanding in his career. Now you bring another guy in that has that like-mindedness. Rashad Fenton's the same way. These are energy creators in that secondary, uh, playmakers who are fearless. And that's where Trent McDuffie fits in here. The Chiefs Kingdom needs to be excited about this pick for the Chiefs to be aggressive to move up, and the fact that he was still there, because you alluded to it earlier, there was thought to be maybe five corners uh, that were in a group that were separated. He was one of those five. He just happened to drop, especially because of the move uh, at the wide receiver position. Well, also, a lot of the corners in this draft, you look at them, and maybe they're projects. Maybe they have great tools, but it didn't always translate to the field. Or you have some guys that were really great maybe a couple years ago, uh, but haven't really shown that, but you're like, well, their talent is still there. Trent McDuffie has just been really good his entire career and if you look at again what Brugler said in his draft guide he has outstanding athleticism outstanding intelligence he's well schooled in various techniques he has a high NFL ceiling and a high floor and should start in the NFL as a rookie that's what you want in a first round draft pick particularly a pick uh, when you're drafting for a position of need like the Chiefs are at corner to plug this guy in day one and he can be maybe one of your starting corners if he impresses enough throughout the offseason program uh, it's just really exciting this is what you want in the first round and the Chiefs found it yeah, some would say, well, he's smaller than a Spags corner. I'd say smaller, shorter than the six foot six one corners. McDuffie's at a little over five ten, uh, but he plays taller than that. And the fact that he is uh, willing to be a great man defender in press coverage and and to be a willing physical player, I think, you know, makes up for that in some. So the Chiefs. Uh, to look at a guy like this who can play physical at the corner position is something that is required uh, in the Chiefs defense for Steve Spagnuolo, and he fits that build. In fact, he's a three-year starter, leader at Washington, uh, and playing against some really good talent in the Pac-12. If you think about the, oh, the Drake Londons of USC and other guys in that league, uh, McDuffie would be ready to go in the National Football League, even if it's a start in the sub package, either your dime or nickel. Well, you mentioned his size. He does play bigger than his size. So he checks in at five foot 11, 193 pounds. But everywhere you look, they say he plays bigger than that. And some guys just play bigger than their size. Their measurables don't necessarily line up with their play on the field. You mentioned this earlier, but he only allowed 16 catches on 36 targets last season for 111 yards. No touchdowns allowed, five pass breakups. He didn't allow more than 40 yards in a single single game and only allowed two deep receptions his entire career. And the thing is, over time, people just stopped throwing his way over and over again. Very hard for corners to accumulate stats if they're so good that quarterbacks never throw at them. So it's really the best compliment you can give a corner uh, in college football. Um, Trent McDuffie just in every way was ready-made, I think, for the NFL. Like I said, he got better every single year. And now here's his chance with the Chiefs. Yeah, came out of a great high school program, really highly considered uh, in California. Uh, at John Bosco High School, and they've cranked out some other players here. So he's played 
at a high level in high school to be a three-year starter at Washington, that's a good coaching staff too. Yeah. I mean, you look at what Washington has been able to do to bring, put NFL players uh, into um, uh, different league teams. Uh, and the fact that he's been one of the top players, even as a sophomore, he was all Pac-12 and just continue to move up. The other thing is he's – some guys will plateau early in their college career and just stay right there. And we've seen that with other guys in the first round. But with McDuffie, he is a guy that has just progressed forward year by year by year and continues to learn and work at his, his craft. It's exciting to add him to that room uh, because, again, this is a transformation year in a way for the Chiefs. We've talked about how exciting it is to have the 12 picks. Now there's less uh, by bundling that to move up here. But – you're also starting to define your next year and your next three to four years. McDuffie fits that category where he becomes now a, a linchpin, uh, potential linchpin and a leader on your defense moving forward. Well, I think, too, if you look at the rest of the AFC West and the rest of the conference, it's really good, right? We have a lot of good quarterbacks in the AFC West, a lot of good quarterbacks in the AFC in general. And what do you need in those circumstances? You need corners that can cover, that you can put out there on an island and you can put them on a Devontae Adams uh, or a guy like Cortland Sutton, uh, great receivers in the AFC West, and they can go out there and win consistently and on their own. And that's what you're hoping for with Trent McDuffie. Now, I don't want to put too much pressure on the kid. Of course, we need to see what he can do throughout the offseason program. But uh, when you invest in a guy like this at pick number 21 overall, a guy that I think could have been a top uh, 12 pick in this draft, you're hoping he can develop into that guy. And when there's so many good quarterbacks and so many good receivers in the AFC West and the AFC in general, this is a position you want to invest in. Yeah, I, I don't, and I have the feeling with him, they're not going to just put everything on his plate right away. Like, they can ease him in. That's what I'm saying in the sub packages because you've got some experience there with Fenton and Snead, even though they're young players. Those guys have played a lot of snaps. And Baker, too. And and Baker, throw him in there. Uh, But they can ease him into here. And, again, he potentially could be a returner. Okay, don't go far, okay? (laughs) The Chiefs have kept the 30th pick. So the Chiefs are going to get their two first-round picks in this draft. They have also kept – the integrity, the guts of this draft, even as you go into rounds two and three. So, an exciting night so far. It's going to get even more so. We are going to step away for just a few minutes, but come back and join us because with that 30th pick, we will come back on live. Just know this, Chiefs, you got a really good uh, Chiefs kingdom. you got a really good player in Trent McDuffie. The Chiefs aggressive to move up from 29 to 21 with New England and, and get a guy that can be an impact player from day one in a variety of ways uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs defense. He's Matt McMullen. I'm Mitch Holtis. We'll see you in just a few minutes.